Hello and welcome back to Let's Try. This is Vault of the Void. Vault of the Void, well, what is it? It's a very uh, affordable, I'm gonna say that straight away, is it, it's pretty cheap, it's like 10, 10 bucks Canadian-ish. Um, deck building game, yes. It's another deck building game, but uh, I really like this one. It does a couple of things differently. It does a couple of things uh, the same, but um, I tend to like the things that it does the same, and it's a tried and true formula, and it, this is a very, very good execution of that formula. We're gonna go through it. Uh, first thing I'm gonna say is I really appreciate this format. Um, I don't think there's, I mean, okay, yes, there is, I'm gonna say this right away, there is a uh, meta progression, but we'll get to that and why I'm kind of okay with it. Um, generally, as a rule of thumb, I'm not, but it's fine. So we have four characters. I've only got the one for now, and we have two different ways to play that card or that deck, Bleed or Blade. Um, I'm familiar with Bleed, and I'm gonna play the one I'm familiar with because uh, this game is actually pretty complex in certain ways. Like, I'm sure there are gonna be people who <laughs> watch this and say, no, it's not. It's a very simple game. You just have to, you know, read the cards and pay attention. And you're not wrong, but also uh, I'm, I'm very, like, Sometimes I get kind of caught up on how does this work? What does this do? Um, before each delve into the del vault, you can add a mastered card, class card to your backpack. After a run where you reach the vault, you'll have the ability to master one of 10 class. This is new. I don't know anything about this. You'll start with one health potion. You have no, not yet mastered any cards for this class or they're on cooldown. Instead, you'll have your run, uh, start your run with a health potion. Okay, so I, I've done the introduction and this is my first normal run, so it, it stands to reason a couple of things would be different. The Void chooses their guardians and assigns their blessings. You'll face these evil apparitions on floor three, the vault. I will cleanse this place of its evil. So I did talk, I have talked a little bit about why I'm, I'm kind of over this format of uh, introducing the player with options. I'll tell you why I'm okay with this one and we'll, we'll get into why. Um, to help plan your path, you can view all the card rewards on offer by clicking map rewards. Okay. Oh, highlight is, okay, so th first of all, this is kind of novel. Um, games, the deck builder games are generally never this transparent when it comes to uh, information like this so I can see oh those those are just straight up over there I can get those cards over there maybe probably um, that's kind of cool so um, this this does offer your standard kind of choice you know the player has a choice to make um, you can either take like a combat or a rest spot um, you know this very kind of diverging path but um, it is a little bit interesting because it's a little bit more diverging. You can kind of uh, take a very snake-like path through here and make the journey on yourself very uh, long-winded in order to... Very very good car that you can hear in the background. Uh, the very long-winded journey that will get, see you more progress and upgrade you. Or you can, um, you know, and I know that's like pretty much the same as every other game, or you can basically take a, like the shortest path. So our first one is a event. As you descend into gloom, you find yourself confronted by the remains of an ornate figure, peaceful in its tomb of stone. Memories begin to flood your mind like ink spilling into water, blossoming slowly far from reach. They're not your own, but familiar all the same. As you urge yourself forward, a voice cuts through the noise like a blade, peaceful and soft, yet bordering on the edge of sorrow. An offer of aid at a time of need. Do you want plus one to your strength or to your defense? No, I'm sorry. Uh, gain one upgrade point or gain 300 essence or gain one random void stone. Um, so void stones are stones that you can use to upgrade your cards. Upgrade points, um, we, like weirdly and unintuitively, are points that you use to upgrade your cards. <laughs> I know that doesn't really, like, those sound like the same thing, but um, Void Stones are, they're interesting. They they kind of give you a, like, very base stat upgrade. Like, you know, um, you can apply the same kind of Void Stone to any card, whereas um, every card upgrades in their own way um, specifically. So, like, you know, say an attack card will gain more attack and do something else, maybe. So I'll gain an upgrade point. We'll get plenty of Void Stones. The upgrade 
points tend to be a little bit harder to come by. Um, I'm going to go ahead and upgrade one of our draw bloods. We'll get into, you know, what does that matter? What, is, what does anything matter? What, is it, what did it say? Card tool tips. Okay. Um, I'm going to, that's an upgraded monster. So we're going to go here and we're going to do something else. We're going to fight something a little bit uh, easier. Potions, brew, or belt. Potions can be equipped in either a brew or belt slot. Each with different effects. Potions that are brewed have their effects played automatically at the start of combat. Often lasting the whole fight. When placed in the belt, you'll have access to triggers effect at any time during your turn. So, I mean, like right away, uh, I really appreciate some of the stuff that this game does. It takes a lot of things that you are probably familiar with and shakes them up just a little bit and makes them all feel a little bit more novel again. So we're going to get um, this card if we beat this, as well as some other things. Let's go ahead and do that. Um, the other thing I will say that this game does that is very novel for a deck builder is it lets you um, sw to switch up your deck like at any time. Like at any point, you can just take cards out and throw ones in. Generally, taking cards out is a, a form of progress that the you know deck builders treat as a reward because you want to pare down your deck. This one, you can't pare down your deck. It has to be 20 cards. But if you get a card you like more, you can like take out something you don't like and put that in. Or you can switch things around and experiment, which I think is just really, really kind of refreshing. I have not seen that done before. And I, I really appreciate it. It kind of means that you, if you're in a bad situation where your deck is not really working for you, it does. it's not the end of the world. That run is not like quotation marks dead. It just means that you might want to try something else, try some of your other cards. Um, so we're going to go ahead and do draw blood. So there's a lot of stuff going on here. And honestly, it's hard for me to really understand it all because, you know, there's a lot of different working parts. Um, so, you know, each creature, it, you know, in this person case, like just Marauder or whatever you want to call them, they're all going to do something different. These guys are attacking. This person is uh, applying a buff um, and they have uh, attack power represented here. I'm not really sure how that works, but um, the strength of each attack enemies will fight for this much damage. Yeah. So three damage and then this one does it like what once, I, you know, hard for me to know. The important part, uh, which is, you know, the thing that is novel here, is they're not actually attacking yet. They're actually, to put it more accurately, they're preparing to attack. So this inflict three threat means that on the next turn, there's going to be five threat on the board. That's what I have to actually defend against, that threat, not these attacks. So it's actually totally fine for me to not... Um, block anything this turn and instead just like go go for it and attack like use all of my attacks and I mean attack using cards is the same in this game as it is in just about any other any other deck builder I have a certain amount of energy and I can expend it to play cards I do have combos I forgot about that part and I have an act uh, like a super ability that I can use it has a cooldown we're going to do this. This is just going to apply uh, blood, or sorry, bleed, which is going to happen, unfortunately, after the enemy takes their turn. I, you can get um, items that, like, switch that around, which are which is really good. That basically means that bleed is applied before the enemy does their turn. So uh, bleed, by, by the way, works the same way as you would expect. Is it, it's just a bunch of damage that is applied. I guess kind of like poison. So I guess the Fortitude takes the form of shield, block. Um, you may have noticed one of them died but was replaced. That's that's because we have to, um, you know, kill a certain number of units before they start disappearing. So in this case, we've completed 50% of this battle. Once this reaches 100%, and we can see if we kill one of these units, how much that fills that by, um, then they will no longer be replaced and then we have to make sure that everyone else you know we kill everything that's on the field basically so this will apply two ap to all that means that they're going to be doing more threat i think yeah to two attack power each so we have five threat on the board um, first thing we're going to want to do 
is evade that. So we've removed the threat on the board, which means we're taking no damage. This guy is applying three threat. This guy is actually applying uh, attack power, which is no good, but there's nothing we can really do about that. This is going to add to our combo. It also applies clot, which I believe stops bleeding on an enemy. So like if I use this, I think it removes their three bleed. Yeah, it does, but it increases our combo. That wasn't necessarily great for us. First time played in turn, the card will be returned to your hand. Expel or volatile cards won't rebound. So we can use this to increase our combo. Certain cards um, do better if there's an, you know, there's more combo on the field. So we'll go ahead and do this and apply as much bleed as we can. Five threat will be on the board next turn, apparently. I guess it's because this Void Enchantress does her thing before this Dark Acolyte. So she's increasing the, the AP and then the threat in turn is also increased. Nice of the game to let me know, right, like just transparently, 11 threat is added. So you don't have to like do some weird arithmetic to figure out, oh yeah, this, this you know, stat is being buffed, so I have to account for that. This is Swift, card will trigger X times equal to your combo. So there's the combo. Um, we're gonna go ahead and use that to increase our combo to three. So that means this is going to do um, more. And this, better to use it on them because that's going to be doing everything. Unfortunately, I should have gotten rid of the uh, threat before I did that. So we're going to be taking five damage. And they got healed. But the heal happens first and then the bleed. So not necessarily great for them. So now we're at 100% battle progress. So we can um, start killing units. There is 11 threat on the board. So we're going to want to get rid of that first and I guess that was all my energy so never mind they're getting healed but they're also bleeding we can kill this lad and then we'll get a silent shiv which we can use on the other on the enchantress and then kill them I guess well it won't kill them but they're gonna die from bleed they have 16 bleed. I don't think they can possibly defend against that. And I think bleed is straight to their health. Like, it, the shield doesn't do anything. Currently have two souls. You can gain souls mainly by fighting mobs. However, they can be found elsewhere. Tradable at the Soul Collector and various other event rooms. So we got 60 essence and two souls. I believe the essence is used at shops. So we're going to go to the Raven's Gift. Um, there's a power here, but it comes at a cost. You may have followed, but it's not too late to turn back. At the start of your turn, block equal to the current battle round. Take the item for yourself, except its curse. You'll gain one void card, which is a three cost card on draw, suffer vulnerable one. Drain the wicked item of its power. You'll gain one void card and eight souls. Destroy the vile item. You'll have no part in this. You gain three souls. Sounds good. I'd rather not dabble in weird cards that I have to mitigate. Okay, so we're going to be fighting an upgraded uh, set. Ooh, these guys. I gotta say, I really like the art in this game. I do get the impression some of it are like bought assets. I really don't care. Like, that's fine with me. But the actual like art and uh, design of a lot of the monsters and uh, general just like game is, is really top notch. And I, I really appreciate it. So we didn't, I don't think, did we get uh, any new cards? Yes, we did. We've gotten tons of new cards. I should try adding them to, my, to our deck. Trigger targets bleed. Okay, so this is really good because this means that we can add a bunch of bleed to a character and then actually make use of that. Um, apply six bleed. So maybe let's get rid of our licks and knives because we don't, I guess we, if we get rid of those, we might want to get rid of for the throat. But let's put in um, gutted. Add two hidden blades to your hand. Balanced volatile. Okay, so maybe we want to put those like the knives back. Each time you play a swift card, deal two random two damage to a random enemy. This is a buff. Lasts for the entire battle. Kind of like the idea of having making use of swift. So let's add these, lick the knives back, and um, 
I mean, I really like that uh, gutted, but we can make use of it even if I had like like less less bleed. So let's take out one draw blood and one uh, evade. Yeah, I'm I'm pretty happy with this. Oh, this adds bleed to all enemies, but I don't know if I like that as much to be honest. Okay, let's let's go with this greenhouse of corruption. So, fourth threat on the next turn, this guy's going to apply stun. At the start of your turn, you'll lose energy equal to your stun value. Removed at the end of your turn. Mm, that's no good. And this guy's going to add a poison. Suffer threat equal to poison at the start of your turn. Reduces by one at the end of your... Okay, so that's, that's fine. Poison just increases the threat, but we can always defend against the threat, right? Inflict three threat. I kind of want to get rid of this guy over here. I suppose we should be getting rid of this blight wart as quickly as we can. So we'll just throw everything on that blight wart. Oh, they disappeared. Interesting. Is this guy going to disappear? I have I, I get the impression that this guy is creating the shrooms, but I don't know. I, d I did not expect that guy to disappear. At the start of each turn, if a combo at zero, combo one, starting from turn four, your max combo is increased by one. Oh, okay. I didn't know about that. So this guy is going to die, so we don't really have to do anything. We can't kill them because we don't do enough damage. So we increase our combo. Oh, I, I shouldn't have done that, actually. I should have blocked. Bummer. Oops. Should have paid more attention to how much energy we have. It's okay. Um, I'm learning, and uh, it's, it's going it's going fine so far. We can block. Uh, we'll block against all of this. It's fine. There's only the one dude left, and the battle's at 100%. So we, you know, we're good. Um, shiv them, and we could take three damage. That's fine. Okay. Nice. Not not a big deal. Apply two vulnerable. Apply bleed equal to vulnerable. Um, that's cool, but I don't think it uh, actually helps us too much. We got an upgrade point also. Um, I kind of want to upgrade this. Slay transfer their bleed. Oh, now that, that makes that 100% worthwhile. So I have to assume, you know, I guess I am assuming what that does is, um, you know, like their bleed moves on to another enemy. So not only does that affect kill them pro probably, but it's also going to like set someone else up for to die easily. Choice of cards along with some essence souls and an upgrade point. Yeah, we'll definitely do that. Oh, we lost a bunch of the level for that. Okay, so I guess you can't be as meandering as I thought. Block X equal to twice. Oh, right. So we get all of these. Um, twice your energy, discard one, add two copies of the discarded card to the discard pile. Deal eight damage. Apply bleed equal to damage dealt. This is nice. But I don't know if it's as good as what, like, I can't, I don't think I can, like, use this as well as our other card. But might be, might be a good idea. Equal to damage dealt. I didn't realize I was making a choice there, if I'm being honest. Um, we have an upgrade point. Um, each time you play a swift card, deal three damage to a random enemy. Oh, I see. So it just upgrades it from two damage to three time, three damage every time we play a swift card. I don't think that sounds that great. I'd rather upgrade one of our draw bloods. I thought I upgraded a draw blood already. Oh, I guess it doesn't list the card I already upgraded. My bad. Sorry, I'm making a lot of silly mistakes right now. All right, let's just upgrade one of our draw bloods. I actually really like draw blood as a card. So we're fighting an elite now. There's there's no choice about that. Corpse mound. Uh, managed spell. I'm not sure what that means. 
You can only ever have one spell active at a time, however, you can switch it any time before an encounter. So, okay, we can have a, di a bunch of spells, not just the one. Um, let's manage our deck. Apply bleed to five enemies, it might be worthwhile. Combo one, add two hidden blades to your hand. No. Um, where is... Yeah, that'll sting, I think, is a good card. We'll pull out one draw blood and put that in. It's a bit higher cost than I would like, but that's okay. Three discarded items lay before you. Every After every second you'll fight, you'll find a potion. Every sixth block card played will trigger an additional time. Each time you kill a non-minion enemy, your spell's cooldown will be reset. Um, I'm not a huge fan of any of these. You may choose to disregard the item and gain 200. Yeah, let's do that. I like, I, I don't like, I'm not a huge fan of any of those. I, I've seen the, the potential for how good like um, items can be and those were not it. So this guy's about to inflict 13 damage right away. Slay, transfer their bleed. So obviously that's not going to work. But we can, I mean, we can apply a bunch of bleed to them. So they have six bleed, so we would do an extra six damage. I think it would be better, honestly, to just like apply more bleed. That's that's what our deck is all about. Oh, right, I forgot you can also... Oh my god, I am such an, a dang fool. I forgot you can also um, basically turn cards into energy. Like, they just go into your discard pile, but basically you can use up cards and turn them into energy, which is like really novel except these ones these are it tells you they're volatile so you can't purge them so oops sorry about that completely forgot a major component of this game so they're about to increase oh they their their ap just did get increased so they're going to uh, inflict 14 threat next turn so we can keep our gutted. That's the other thing is I don't think you discard your entire hand um, when you uh, when you like pass your turn. Let's do building storm. That way we can play our swift cards and do more damage. Uh, tempted to do this increases our combo, but I don't actually think that that's worthwhile. So we're gonna go ahead and purge those, and then we'll inflict some bleed, and then. Per um, trigger their bleed. So that does a bunch of damage, like a ton of damage. We are going to take 13 damage. There's no way around that. Okay, we can we can block this time, but they're like they're in, inflicting more and more threat every single turn. So, this is not ideal. I believe you you keep your energy as well. You don't just like, like you don't have to play your cards. You don't lose your energy. You you gain two energy every turn. Like the the game, um, this game has kind of disregards a lot of the standard rules of uh, deck builders. Like it really doesn't care. I was like, oh yeah, I mean, no, you're not discarding your hand in this game. Deal eight damage, apply bleed equal to damage dealt. Yeah. That could be really good. Um, I would like to defend. So we'll do this. Wouldn't mind doing our... I guess this will do an extra damage. So we'll do this. Also applies more bleed. We could almost kill them, but we can't quite. So I'll block seven, and I'm, I'm going to take eight damage, unfortunately. But we are probably going to kill them this turn. Oh, good days. Add it to the top of your deck. Unplayable, volatile. Can't purge them. That's okay. We are about to kill them. In fact, they, they are dead. Nice. So I did take quite a bit of damage there. That's okay, though. You're gonna. That's gonna happen. Uh, maybe we can get over there. Soul Collector. Minimum cost seven souls. Well, we have plenty of souls, so let's maybe get mosey on over there. I 
I didn't use, I still haven't used my, um, I, I ought to use my spell, like, as soon as I can. Errant Scout Light. Dusk Flash. Adds one daze and then will attack. Immune to all damage and debuffs. Uh, is it, it's immune right now? While you have four or more cards in hand, this enemy is immune. Oh, okay, so we have to discard down. Grim Glow. While you have four or more cards in hand, this enemy, oh, okay. So, yeah, you have to discard down to three cards and then you can actually do stuff. Interesting. Might as well keep that in our hand. They're going to add a bunch of dazes to our hand. Okay, we're going to go ahead and block right away. Oh, right, that didn't do anything. And unfortunately, the dazes count as cards. So that's a dang shame. And so do the silent shivs. So you have to play your hand in a very specific way. I'm going to go ahead and use my uh, spell on them to apply uh, weak. Wow, they have a lot of attack power. This is a really brutal enemy to fight. Okay, two, choose two to discard. Oh no. Uh, well, there's no threat, so we'll get rid of the block. Actually, not really a problem to discard because that's what's stopping me from hurting them. Add one day's attack. All right. Um, let's see. Okay. Well, we got to get rid of some stuff. We'll play this and then we're good. We should be good. And their, their bleed is now their full health. So we're, we're good. And we are getting, um, these void stone bars by the way these void are basically like every time it fills up you get a void stone we should actually use those i'll, I'll use them I'll, I'll use whatever ones i have right after i'm done here uh deal 11 damage and then uh, apply bleed equal to damage dealt that sounds really that sounds pretty good um ba -ba 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 -ba. nine bleed that's actually really nice we have to make combo a, a little bit more worth it though friendly gentleman offering void stones for sale uh, merchant let's check out the merchant because we have to go to the soul collector as well so dang these are really expensive combo one add two hidden blades i guess this is a pretty good card oh we can we can spend more to get the upgraded version uh blades are swift so they happen the more combo you have. Um, but then combo resets, unfortunately. Oh, balanced. Benefit from combo but does not consume it. Oh, perfect. So this would be good for increasing our combo. I've got Scattershot before. It's okay. Um, deal four damage if the attack target is attacking. Apply one weak. That's okay. Expel two cards from your deck. Expel. So they just it just this just removes cards that you don't want. Um, deal 16 damage opener will trigger if the card is the first card played in a turn. Gain one energy and overcharge one. Max energy is increased by one per stack. At the start of each turn, gain one energy and reduce overcharge. Okay, so this is an interesting card that you can like reduce the cost of. Kind of want to just get the upgraded apprentice's blade. Let's do that. That's like all of our money, but that means we can start doing some interesting stuff. So we have three void stones. So these add rage. This turn attack and affliction cards deal um, X percentage more damage. So rage increases your damage. Um, attack and affliction card. So you want to put this on a card you're not that's not necessarily doing damage, I think. So maybe Lick the Knife would be a good candidate for something like that. Or actually, um, Apprentice's Blade would be perfect because this is not actually doing an attack. It's giving you attack cards. We have enough, and we want to put that in our deck for sure. I think we want to take out some more Draw Bloods. 
put that in. Um, could take out a lick of the knife, but I actually think that uh, our for the throats are going to become our main form of applying bleed. So we'll take out another draw blood and we'll put in another apprentice's blade, but let's see if we can apply another void stone. Overcharge, max energy is increased by one stack. So this gives us more energy on our next turn. Um, Ghost Inert. This card's Void Stone only triggers once per turn. Add a volatile copy of this card to your hand. Uh, okay. So when you get the card, you get an extra copy of the card. What would be good for that? Maybe Sidestep? No, that doesn't sound right. What What's a card we would like to have two of? I mean, kind of Apprentice's Blade, but it, that's a really expensive thing. Apply Bleed to two random enemies. I'd rather use that on like a zero cost card if I can, but I don't think I can. Um, yeah, I'm not going to I'm not going to do that. So let's see you put our overcharge on something. I think that Lick the bl Knife would be a good one. Although, uh, do I have any of those in our deck? Yes, I do. I have both. Okay. So let's go ahead and throw that on one of their, those. Do I even have... That's not in the deck. Okay, so we want to have those all in the deck. And we're at 20 cards now. Show cards in deck. I see. Oh, cool. You can even save deck. Save your current deck, load deck. <laughs> oh, that's that's really novel, actually. Um, I really appreciate that. You know what? Let's do Blackstone on uh, Blade Storm, and uh, I'll take out an Evade and put Blade Storm in. I don't know. I'm really just kind of experimenting right now, and we're about to get some more cards or items, I guess. When applying a debuff to an enemy not suffering from any debuffs, double its value. That could be really cool. Uh, if you gain an amount of block exactly equal to remaining threat, delay block 8. It reduces current threat. Um, block at the start of your turn before drawing turn cards. What? That's weird. Random common artifact, random uncommon artifact. Random rare artifact. Yeah, let's do that. We got uh, Flask of Red Juice. After you play your second card in a turn, Rage 50%. Oh, wow. That's actually amazing. That's incredible. That just increased, like, all of our damage output by, like, a ridiculous amount. So this is unfortunately going to be wasted because I don't have enough to buy anything. So the reward here, block 20, trigger all bleed. Ooh. Ooh, that's actually really nice. Or increase target's bleed by 50%. Also really nice. Tougher fights. Uh, we don't know what we get from this one. And then this is Shrine, a Twisted Shrine devoted to the worship of some being you'd rather not know about. A choice to heal, cleanse your deck of void cards, or to gain some extra essence and souls. Um, I kind of like the Sanguine Shell. That sounds really good. We're going to be fighting a dragon whelp, whelpling. All right, so right away we got our apprentice's blade. Um, and we have lick the knife. So let's go ahead and throw out lick the knife since there's no bleed applied so far. Um, we have like all of our cards right now. So when do we get our rage after you play your second card? So it would be good to do this now, because then we're going to get 50% rage. R right? Did we get it? I can't tell if we got it. Rage, 50%. Where do we see how much rage we have? Six damage, swift, balanced. Well, we're at uh, like max combo, so this is doing like a ridiculous amount of damage. Um, so let's go ahead and do, do that. And then we're going to go ahead and purge this one and apply five bleed to all. And we get a second one. So we're, we're... Oh, this does seven damage. Is that worthwhile? I don't know. Let's let's try the blade storm. 
So we've, we've, we, that's a pretty good first turn. We lose one combo, but we're, we've got a lot of combo going on right now. So, rage 50%. So we're gonna go ahead and use one evade, and then this card should do more damage. It's really hard for me to tell. I don't know where rage is represented. So this is gonna do eight damage. See, my thought is that it's after you play your second card in a turn. So meaning like this card, right? So now we do 50% more damage. Am I like, a, is that wrong? Yeah, yeah, this is doing 12 now. And that means it's also doing 12 bleed. So I am right about that. I wish it was, uh, maybe the UI would represent that somewhere. So our combo is now pretty low. We can uh, uh, apply all the bleed. So why don't we go ahead and apply six more bleed. No, what we want to do actually is play two cards. Purge this. Apply six bleed. So this is doing 12 damage. Hmm. Maybe we want to do this instead. Yeah, we want to do this instead because that, that guarantees they die. Perfect victory. We got a health potion. And a soul. We definitely want to uh, put that in our deck. I think I want to take out one evade for that. Because that's just like 20. Well, okay. The problem is, is that once you play it, it's gone. Is the issue. Also, do I not have all my apprentices blade in there? We definitely want all of those. And we have another void sword, a void stone block four. Um, let's go ahead and add this to a card that probably already applies some block, or we could add it to um, something we've upgraded that we have a guarantee of playing, like for the throat. Let's do that. That makes sense to me. And we have too many cards right now, so maybe we want to take something out. With the knife, I don't know. We don't, there's nothing wrong with having too many cards. It's just like, generally you don't want to. Okay. So what do we get here? Deal eight damage. If you have overcharged, deal another eight damage. Eh. Draw. Three, if an attack is drawn, again, uh, drawn uh, gain one energy, you can no longer draw this turn. Eh, I don't know. I don't know about that one. This is a pretty beefy fellow. I think we will want to use our spell maybe right away. Oh, apply a vulnerable equal to combo. We want to get our combo up before we do that. So let's go ahead and do that. We can get our combo up like right away and then apply three vulnerable. They're gonna take more damage now. Also, that meant we did, I think we did more damage. I'm, I'm gonna, and we're just gonna keep these cards around. They healed, interesting. Um, Do I want to use this? I don't think I do. Apply some more bleed. Actually, I should have played two cards before I did that. That was foolish. So let's purge that and then we'll block all of the threat. They're healing. This is fine. We're doing like an absurd amount of bleed damage like every turn. So this will add block. There's no threat on the board, so we can honestly just go ham. Let's honestly purge that, so that now they'll die. Nice. Bleed is working out really well for us. We got another upgrade point. Oh, we get you get more rewards if you do a perfect fight. Nice, I didn't actually know that. So this gives us more combo. 
why don't we make this lick the knife do more combo or we could upgrade one of our apprentice's blades that would add three hidden blades to your hand let's do that that sounds really good um, after clearing this room you'll receive a potion and hamstring deal three damage apply one slow once uh, and and it's swift it triggers x times that sounds really good slow reduces frenzy by one per stack so it's like a really good uh, debuff considering how well that it's not balanced so it's going to kill our combo so i actually don't think that that is worthwhile let's just let's just fight the boss we'll fight the boss and uh i think we're pretty much good to go i'm gonna go ahead and put this uh, potion in our brew so that we use it right away. I don't think there's anything wrong with that. Uh, do one last check to see if there's anything I want to take out or put back in. I think we're good here. We used up all of our void stones. All right. So first thing, oh, blade storm right away. Perfect, because that doesn't, I don't think rage applies to that. So let's go ahead and do that. And um, there's no point in using evade, so I'm actually gonna use that up for energy. Trigger targets bleed. Might not be worth it for this turn, but I don't know. Oh yeah, we get to play this again. Forgot about that. Nine bleed. Yeah, I don't think there's, well, we wanna keep gutted. I don't think we wanna get rid of it, which is actually perfect, because that means we should um, just like throw out all of our stuff and then just keep this until we have an absurd amount of bleed on the main dude. Eight threat for the next turn. And the Skeleton King is going to be adding four attack power to themselves. So, but I mean, nothing we did would have changed that. So, uh, this will unfortunately clot three, so it'll remove some of the bleed. Block 20. We could block 20 and trigger all bleed. That doesn't actually help too much. Let's get rid of some of that threat. Well, that's block nine, so there you go. We'll purge this other one. Um, slay, transfer their bleed. Kind of want to do this, but it's we're not, we're not ready yet. And now we have Sanguine Shell. I want to keep this as well. Uh, so let's honestly just like get our um, our combo up. Oh, there's our rage. There it is. I finally found it. That's that's. It really was my secret. I was always angry. I just, just, just didn't see it. So we're taking 20 damage if I don't block that. Um, all right, we're gonna we're gonna have to do some stuff here for sure. Apply six bleed. So let's go ahead and do that, and then trigger that target's bleed, and then slay them. So this person now has thirty bleed, which is really nice. Um, unfortunately, I can't play this no matter what, so I may as well try and evade block eight really sucks honestly um but it's fine we're we're gonna win we're it's not even gonna be cl close uh choose one card to discard i guess lick the knife lock 20 trigger all bleed expel this is the worst time to use this because uh, there's no threat on the board so let's use some of these apprentice blades Actually, yeah, let's use this Lick the Knife. And then um, we get our combo up. Kind of, let's... Oh, that ra getting that Rage up even further would be really nice, but I don't think I can do it. Let's purge this Apprentice, and then we'll get our combo up one more. And then these are going to do far more damage. Look at that. Nice. We almost killed the boss. I never got to use my Sanguine Shell. And once the boss is dead, everyone else dies. New spell from Dust. You stare deep into the abyss. 
Uh, that haunts the bottom of the swell, motes of light, glimmer, and twinkle. Gain two random void stones, gain two upgrade points, obtain this uncommon artifact. Uh, upgraded version of this card you purge in a fight will be added to your hand. What? An upgraded version of the first card? Oh. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, gain one blue void. Oh, I have to pay more for these ones. Gotcha. One vo blue void. What is blue void? We're about to get one. Draw one, discard one. Okay, that's kind of cool. Um, two random void stones. I mean, that sounds better than paying 350 for one blue one. Or two upgrade. You know, let's take the, take the two upgrade points. That sounds really good. Um, so it seems to me this is another case of the game's not over, and I thought that once we beat that dude, we were done. Um, so I think this is another case of, you, I think you, you see what the game is all about, and um, you would likely know if you want to get it by now, or maybe you'd like to watch me play more of it. Either way, you're going to have to let me know in the comments <laughs> if you'd like to see a series of this. I wouldn't mind. I think this game is really, really cool. I really enjoy it. Um, there's a lot of stuff going on here. Uh, and I'd love to I'd love to see the full potential of what this game has to offer um, Lots of icons floating around click here to get into it. That's that's funny to me. Oh, I see that's actually really helpful So anyway, this was vault of the void um, This game is really cool and if you'd like to see more of it Let me know if you enjoyed this video definitely hit that like button and consider subscribing for more content like this I'll see you guys next time. Take it easy